Yeah, I think, you know, um, start with yourself isn't a bad answer. Uh, the, the first LGBT thing I ever became involved in was with a bunch of other kids in our early 20s trying to get a civil rights law passed in San Francisco, which didn't have one in 1977, didn't have a, a gay rights law. Um, and, and we all had jobs, or I was in law school actually, um, and we succeeded actually. Um, and after we did it in San Francisco, another bunch of kids who I helped out with did one in LA. And then we did one in Berkeley. And then we did one in Sacramento. We spent, um, we spent about 12 years doing it before we were able to successfully move the effort for a civil rights law to the state level. The first domestic partnership law in the country, which was passed in, in San Francisco and then vetoed by a politician whose name I won't mention, but her initials are Diane Feinstein, um, <laughs> um, was done by a bunch of kids who had jobs, this time now in their late 20s and early 30s, but who were doing it in their spare time. Um, um, the, the make your, look, look, you, what you said about a grassroots activism, I completely believe that. There was a, in this country, in the 70s and 80s, there were a huge number of groups of, of LGBT people who did just that, who passed civil rights laws and passed domestic partnership laws on the local level. And they did two things. They were the buildup that made the broader laws possible, but they engaged the communities in discussions about gay people, and they got us involved in one-to-one -one discussions with the people we can move along. I'm pushing this tell three thing, but I think there's actually no finer way to move the agenda forward than getting together with a bunch of other people and trying to pass a local law. Look, the first one in New York City took 16 years. So if you don't succeed the first year you try it, you shouldn't give up. They take a while. The domestic partnership law in San Francisco took 12 years and five attempts. San Francisco in the 80s and 90s. But, but, but my point being, this, the, the engagement is what winds up moving people, which winds up setting the, the predicate. So don't go looking for some great leader up. You live in Idaho, you don't have a single civil rights law in the whole state of Idaho, in any city. You don't have a single domestic partnership policy. It's time we got some. Contact Tim. <laughs> and yeah, I, I understand completely, but you know, where, where, are, where are the resources? Because I'm, I'm here for information, and what are the resources for these small people? What are, what are some sure. good things to get them out? Because they really just have no clue. They yeah. have no Matt, idea. Matt Go to our Rashad. website, yes. getbusygetaclu.org, getbusygetequal, or the task forces if you prefer it, or HRCs, the, open those things up and they have a wealth of stuff about how to do exactly this. And there's a great old book almost out of print called Try This at Home. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we have someone that covers Idaho for GLAAD that goes there and does spokesperson trainings. We've been there um, a couple of times in the last year, couple of years doing spokesperson trainings going to Pride Idaho, um, and, and, which, is, which is Idaho's pride, right? Yeah. And um, going to Pride Idaho, it's one of those things that you definitely remember, right? And, um, and, and training activists to, to tell their stories. And so, and, and having those conversations, you know, will help to change hearts and minds so we can give, get the, you know, move forward on domestic So get Rashad's card before you leave here. If you build yes. a local organization, we will come. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to speak a little bit more to the activism idea. Um, I think I was chair of Utah for Obama, and the whole idea, the reason why it was successful all across the country is the fact that it was grassroots. It was people like me. What we, we didn't get information. We didn't get um, organization from the campaign. It was We did it ourselves. We didn't have those resources. And um, recently here in Utah, we had a panel, a town hall panel, and there were a dozen uh, grassroots or, or professional um, organizations for the gay community that are around. And I think that what you have to do is, you know, Idaho might not have a dozen, but um, you have to start it. You have to, you know, email people, start getting lists together, send out emails, say, let's get together. And that's what succeeds and that's what makes our cause um, in the end win. Great. And I, I want to thank you very much. And I want to make a comment. It may sound a little bit off the wall, but one of the big differences between then and now um, is the collapse of journalism, is the collapse of newspapers, um, and the increasingly centralized control of television and radio. So I think you have to be aware that we really do have to figure out new, the next generation of, if it's not Web 3.0, it might be Web 5.0, but how we're going to start building sites that can do for people, for organizing, for representation, what a much larger and, and more porous and more accessible press used to be able to do. 
And I think that's going to be the next challenge for a lot of political activism. How you get the syn synchronicity between the web and, and the offline real life event. Real life in quotes, I should say. But I think this is kind of the, one of the next frontiers to really be tackled. And I'm always astonished at how, in what narrow pathways technology treads. You know, I don't know, with all of the GPS and cell phone technology right now, I don't understand, for instance, why there's not, you know, a domestic violence posse campaign that brings people to a house within five minutes of somebody pressing a button and, and, and gets 200 people there to stop something. I mean, why should, you know, mob events only be for raves? Why why should um, things only be done for pranks? Why aren't they, why, why, what's holding back the next level of political and social and cultural organizing? So I think there's a lot to be done. There's a need for creativity. Huh? I saw Rough Antes, and Rough Antes is a great thing to see in terms of a, of a real solid grassroots campaign. But what I want to know is how to link that up to the kind of technologies that people in this room really know how to use and, and really take us all to the next level. Um, are we out of time or do we have a little bit more time? Couple more minutes from the panel. Last remarks from anybody up here. Rob, I see you wanting to speak. Uh, just a couple thoughts in closing. First was, uh, I guess, an answer to the question about leadership. Um, you know, we never know from where leaders will emerge. Who would have thought that Barack Obama would be our president two years ago? Um, and I think Harvey Milk's story is is certainly parallel to a degree. Um, you know, leaders come, leaders emerge from places you, you, you least suspect, um, and they tend to, you know, fill in uh, a void. So uh, we shouldn't lose hope in that regard in terms of that mythical, uh, you know, leader that we all hope for and long for. Um, and I guess the second, second thing is just in closing to come around to what I mentioned and Cooper and a few of us, I think it really comes down to their different, different forms of activism. You know, and I think we each embody that on this, you know, on, the, on this panel. There, we all within us, within us have the capacity to do it in our own lives. And it may be in documentary filmmaking, and it may be in the law, and, uh, and, and here we are. <laughs> I think we, we have to support, you know, with everything, we still have to support culture because it's going to be, it's going to be tough this next year. I mean, I think there's going to be organizations that just die. All the cultural organizations that provide um, funding for films, funding for issues, funding. You know, I still think. I know you probably disagree a little bit, but but it's like completely such a big, great medium for changing people's minds. I've seen films that have changed. Go see End of the Line. It'll change how you eat. And you just can't help it. You see it in great documentaries, and they're doing it. And the documentary filmmakers are activists now, and they're doing it. And I don't feel like I'm a leader at all. I just feel like I'm a connector. And there's films we've shown here. You can go back and look at the list. And if you show those to people, you know, not everyone is very articulate like me. I show a movie, and that's what I do, and that it takes somebody else's articulation, and it's so well done. Uh, um, the Bible tells us so. Um, small town gay bar. I can't even think of the film. Go find them on Netflix. Show them to people, and there you're halfway there. You know, it's it's a wonderfully powerful medium, and you're gonna have to support these cultural organizations, not just like Sundance because. Sponsorship's going away. Outfest, I, I fear, you know, I fear for them. It's not going to be easy. And, you know, that's, I worked there for a long time. That's a very hard festival to program. Serving the gay and lesbian community can be really fucking tough, man. They just pick on you. You get so beat down. You're trying to do so much. And, you know, I did it for four years, and that was the hardest. And it's never been like that. So it was just hard. And I know that because I talk to them. And you have to know that. And you have to spread the word. Yes, they're going to make decisions you don't like and all that stuff. But you can't keep putting them down. They're supporting you. And you have to support them both with your mouths but also with your money. And I want to add a PS to, to Cooper's great rabble-rousing speech, which is when people ask me why I work in film, I say, well, nobody had to elect Brokeback Mountain. Films can go out there as a voice, and films can get taken up, and films can be successes, and films can be instrumental and transformational, and they don't have to win elections. They don't have to win a majority vote. They can go out there and build a majority by showing all over the place, and I think that's really important to remember.